Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's video, we are starting the concept of the Hazard's Law. Previously, we were talking about the enthalpy changes, and in today's video, we are going to be talking about the Hazard's Law and the Hazard Cycle. Before we begin, let's take an example from physics. Imagine you have a platform A and there's a platform B at the bottom. Let's call it case number one. Let's call it case or scenario number one. In another scenario, or let's say case B, sorry, case two, we have a platform A, a platform B like last time, but in the middle, let's say we have a platform X. What actually happens is that imagine if we have a ball on platform A and we drop this ball on platform B, there is a change in height. So this is the height of platform A and this is the height of platform B. So obviously there's a change of height. And obviously, if you remember physics, there is a change of potential energy also. So change of height will lead you towards the change of potential energy. In the second case, a similar ball with a similar mass is there, but you drop it to platform X first and then towards the platform B. Is the change of height same? If you notice the diagram, the change of height at the end of the day is still the same because even if the even if the like process is happening in two steps if the process is happening in step one and then step two the change of height is still the same so change in potential energy is still the same using this concept we are going to talk about the Hazard's Law. Because in Hazard's Law, it states that the change in energy for a reaction, the change in energy, or you can say enthalpy for a reaction, is independent, is independent of the path, of the path taken by the system it really doesn't matter what kind of pathway the system is taking all that matters is a similar reactant and product should be there let me give you an example for example let's take case one and case two in case one what i am doing is i am taking pure carbon and pure hydrogen and I'm going to combust them in first case I'm going to take pure carbon I will be combusting it using oxygen so I am taking pure carbon I'm combusting it to make pure oxygen and I made like in presence of pure oxygen to make carbon dioxide gas the enthalpy change for this reaction should be called standard enthalpy of combustion for pure carbon so that is the standard enthalpy of combustion for pure carbon. At the same time, I took hydrogen and I also combusted that. When I combusted the pure hydrogen, what I got was pure water. So I'm going to call it, this is water, let's say it's standard condition, so liquid water. That's the standard enthalpy combustion for pure hydrogen this is my first case i'm combusting pure carbon and pure hydrogen in a second scenario what i did was i started with pure carbon i took pure carbon in the second case but i made ethanol out of it so in the first case i was making carbon dioxide directly but in the second scenario I wanted to make ethanol so I used 
these reactants to make ethanol which is C2H6O. Now you would be like, sir, the equation isn't balanced and that is true. I am putting two carbons here, three hydrogens here, and on the way I am also writing half mole oxygen because oxygen is also needed. Meanwhile, don't forget to write oxygen on the case one scenario. I need one mole oxygen here and I need half mole oxygen here. So in the second scenario, I'm making ethanol first. Let's call it standard enthalpy formation for ethanol. And continuing on case two, I am combusting the ethanol now to produce similar carbon dioxide and water. So in the second scenario, I made ethanol first and now I am combusting the ethanol to make carbon dioxide and water. When I go to balance it, I get to know that it's going, there's going to be two carbon dioxides and three waters. Let's call it the standard enthalpy for combustion of pure ethanol. If you notice, my reactants were carbon and hydrogen in both scenarios. Only the balancing wasn't same, but my even the products are same. But on the case one, I'm doing a direct method. What I'm doing is a direct method. It's a direct method. I'm combusting carbon and hydrogen directly. In case two, I'm doing a two-step process, a two-step indirect method. Two-step indirect method, but that shouldn't matter, right? Because the Hess's law says the steps, the path doesn't matter. If I balance my case one by putting two carbons with two carbon dioxide, three hydrogens with three waters, now you can see even the reactants and products are same. They are same here. So at the end of the day, we can conclude, now let me make it a little smaller. At the end of the day, we can conclude that the enthalpy change for these two in the green circle is equal to the enthalpy change for this in the blue circle because at the end of the day they are doing the same reactants and products so we can say the standard enthalpy combustion of pure carbon and standard enthalpy combustion for pure hydrogen should be equal to standard enthalpy formation for ethanol and standard enthalpy combustion for pure ethanol as long as the values are balanced. I have only changed one balancing on the left side which is for carbon, I added a two, and for hydrogen. So based on the balancing the values should be equal and that is really important because this will give us a mathematical equation to solve standard enthalpies. While we are at it, we should also be able to draw the hazard cycle for the reaction. Consider case one and two. In case one, we start with two mole carbon and three mole hydrogen to make two mole carbon dioxide and three moles of water Obviously, we were using oxygen throughout the process, so I am writing oxygen also as a reactant. We needed 3.5 mole of oxygen, so I balanced it. The second scenario was I made ethanol first. So I made ethanol, which was C2H6O in the step one. So that was step one. And the second step was combusting this ethanol. The first step, the case one, which was a single step process, was a direct method. But the second scenario was a two step indirect method. In the case one, in the direct step method, you were just combusting pure carbon twice 
and you were combusting standard enthalpy combustion for pure hydrogen thrice so let me put in two arrows for that but the thing is exactly the same but in the case two with a two-step process you were first forming the ethanol under standard conditions from elements and then you were combusting the same ethanol under standard conditions that is enough has a cycle for us now let's take a practice question here we have the standard enthalpy combustion for pure carbon which is minus 394 kilojoule per mole so that is kj per mole the standard enthalpy for hydrogen is going to be minus 286 minus 286 kj per mole we have been also given the combustion for a compound we call it benzene we come across an a2 level here it's called benzene with a formula for c686 it has a value of minus 3268 kilojoule per mole and the question warns what is the standard enthalpy for formation of benzene which is c6h6 let's begin if we want to make benzene which has a formula for benzene which has a formula for C6H6 if we talk about its formation it's going to be C6H6 made by six carbons and three hydrogens that would be the formation and the combustion would have been and the combustion would have been same benzene making six times the carbon dioxide and three times the water I am making a vertical arrow to show that we can also do that right the first step would have been the formation of benzene which is C6H6 and the second step would have been the combustion of the same benzene which is C6H6 this is a two-step process it's a two-step indirect method what would have been the direct method the direct method the direct method would have been you combust the carbon and hydrogen directly you don't make benzene at all so the direct method would have been you combust the pure carbon you combust the pure carbon which would have been standard enthalpy combustion for carbon six times because using six moles of carbon and you combust the pure hydrogen to make water which would have been standard enthalpy combustion of hydrogen gas but three times because you're using three moles this would have been a direct method so here direct method is equals to indirect method direct method is six times standard enthalpy combustion for carbon and three times standard enthalpy combustion for hydrogen that would have been equal to standard enthalpy formation for benzene first you make it and standard enthalpy for combustion for the same benzene you make it then you heat it that would have been indirect method let's put in the values the combustion for pure carbon is minus 394 times 6 hydrogen combustion is minus 286 times 3 formation of benzene is unknown combustion of benzene is minus 3286 you have to solve these values when you solve these values you get to know that 6 times 394 6 times 394 is going to be 2364 2364 and 286 times 3 is going to be minus 858 because of the sign already 
that is equal to the unknown but you put in the negative value on the other side so that becomes positive 3286 so 3286 minus 2364 minus 858 that is your positive 64 enthalpy positive 64 kilojoule per mole is the standard enthalpy formation for benzene i hope this concept is clear for you guys in the next class we'll be doing more examples stay tuned guys thanks